It is Thursday, September 8th, 2011. I'm Alex Jones, and this is InfoWars Nightly News, where hardcore information is covered, where the news behind the news is revealed. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to get into the news, and a little bit later, uh, we're going to cover this whole end of the world culture, people that believe in Planet X, Nibiru, uh, Comet, uh, Elenin. We're going to be getting into all of it with Dr. Uh, Agnew. We've got George Humphrey, economist, joining us in studio to talk about uh, the globalist endgame and the fact that they have basically already conquered the planet uh, through financial fraud. That's coming up. Uh, this evening as well. But first, let's get into some of the other top stories. Wow, Ron Paul last night again won the NBC debate poll, won all the other polls. He won more than 50% of all the votes against all the other candidates. And what did NBC do? NBC didn't report on him in any of their major stories, neither did MSNBC. They basically ignored the winner and engaged in another scam. They put on television that graph you're seeing. Uh, when the poll first started, he had 43% to Mitt Romney's 21. But you notice all the other graphs are proportional. 1.3 is proportional to 2.7. 2.9 is proportional to 4%. 7.8 is proportional to 16.4. 16.4 is proportional to 21.5 of Mitt Romney. But Ron Paul, with 21 plus points more, is looks like he's only barely winning. Then this morning, because of heat, they went ahead and reversed themselves, but still didn't extend it out as far as it should when Ron Paul uh, closed out the poll with 53 plus percent, more than half against all those other candidates. And the dirty tricks didn't stop there. Again, we scoured NBC and MSNBC articles. They would have whole stories about the aftermath and who won. They wouldn't even mention Ron Paul, who clearly was the only constitutional person up there and who's winning the straw polls when he won the second uh, CPAC poll so coveted this year. Fox News dubbed in booing and said it was a mistake when they got caught. The good news here is we're catching them and they're scared. And I'll tell you who else is scared. I was told by a high level Fox News personality almost a year and a half ago, I talked about it on air at time, that Rick Perry would run, that he'd break a fake pledge not to run, and that he was scared of just a couple people, Ron Paul and Alex Jones. This high powered individual off record called me just to tell me how bizarre this was. Well, you see, he's scared because we know he worked for Al Gore. We know he supported Hillary Care. We know he's a carbon taxer, a gun grabber. We know he's not even the Republican he says he is. And that's, that's bad right there. I'm just a constitutionalist that he's a total phony. So what happened last night? This is amazing. Uh, during a break, and, and, and now the witnesses have gone public uh, from the media. Perry walked over to Paul, grabbed his arm, and got in his face and uh, was very, very rude to him. And we're still trying to find out exactly what he said. But, but Perry was almost yelling at him. And uh, Ron Paul basically pulled his hand away from him. Uh, and, and now the media has asked both camps to explain exactly what happened. But why did Perry do that? Because he's scared. He knows the only real person in that room is Ron Paul, and Rick Perry is trying to become Ron Paul. You know, I've told the story, and Mike Hansen and others are a witness. Uh, what so is uh, so is uh, Raymond. A couple of friends after the TV show we were doing locally in Austin, uh, what four years ago ended, uh, we went down to eat at Luevo Leon Mexican food restaurant on Sixth Street. And Rick Perry's whole family's in there on the table next to us. I didn't know that at the time, that it was his family. And Rick Perry walks in, gives me a dirty look, walks back out, then gets a security detail to come in and stand by the, by, uh, we were in the back dining hall at the back of the building. It's a big restaurant. And then Perry, once his security was there, walked over and, and leaned over the chair and said, I want you to have a blessed Thanksgiving. I can't remember, was it Christmas? It was a blessed something coming up in a few days. I want you to have a blessed, and it just gave me this crazy look, and then rotated and walked over, and I looked over and almost got in his face, 
but thought, ah, he's with his family, I'm just going to leave him alone. But, but this, you know, this is good that he did that, because it shows he's scared. He didn't go and get Mitt Romney's face, another Obamacare globalist carbon taxer. He didn't get Michelle Bachman's face. He didn't get any of the other little trolls' faces. He got in Ron Paul's face because he is scared. Now, continuing with other news, uh, Natural News has got a big article out. Gibson Guitars proves the environmental police state wants your wood products and guns. That's right. Now they're saying old pianos, old furniture, any type of, quote, endangered wood, even if you've got a hundred-year-old piece of furniture or guitar, the green police are coming. Not just for your normal light bulbs, not just for everything else. It just proves what a deep, deep, crazy police state, land of the free, home of the brave, where they arrest people selling lemonade and you can't have a garden in your yard and so much more. Finally, uh, in news, uh, we've got big sis set to zap travelers with MRI style scans. And Homeland Security head came out and told Politico and others, don't worry, you're not going to have to take your shoes off soon. We've got new scanners coming out. And then they detail that the scanners are MRI. And I went, wait a minute, the New York Times reported people dying from MRIs and getting cancer. And if they're not calibrated right, all your hair will fall out because there's so much radiation. So many powerful magnetic waves going into you. And so n n n uh, not only are they going to bake you with the naked body scanners or make you walk by those open x-ray scanning luggage, now they're going to try to make you fry your feet with an MRI. You have any idea what MRI type technology does to metal if it's inside you? I mean, this is this is just unbelievable. But it's even more unbelievable that the TSA workers stand around inside uh, of these facilities, basically being microwaved and baked. They're the ones that are really getting cooked. With more on the seismic global events that are now taking place on our planet. George Humphrey, uh, economist, businessman, former Austin City Council member, good friend of mine now for, well, I met him more than 16 years ago, uh, joins us. And, of course, he's also an author. And George is the first person I heard, not talk about the private Federal Reserve and the New World Order, but to talk about derivatives and how it was a plan to bankrupt all the major pension funds and government systems of the planet and how out of that crisis after they bankrupted the North American Union, the European Union, the Asian Union, they would then bring in this global bank of the world. And I know in his book, Common Sense, and then um, several others, he broke all this down back in the mid and late 1980s. So I wanted to have him here today uh, to discuss the latest developments because it's all unfolding as, just exactly as you said it would, George. <laughs> First of all, it's great to be here, and your new studio is fabulous. And thank you for that introduction. You know, as we, we look back on what I said and what you said and a few others said 12, 15 years ago, we weren't absolutely perfectly right, but the things that we had to say were pretty on base. Well, George, I learned about derivatives from you. Yeah. Never, I mean, I didn't know what that and, term was. And I'm, I'm still, I, I have a degree in economics. I talk about this every single day with some really smart people around the world. And I still don't know all, the, everything about them. I'm still learning about it because they're such complex instruments. But it doesn't take a PhD in economics to figure out when they took down the Glass-Steagall Act, which was put in after the Great Depression to stop the runaway betting on, on, on finances that were going on. The Glass-Steagall Act was the breaks between the financial houses and the banks in this country, that, and it worked very, very well for 60 some odd years. And then the absolute monsters, the Goldman Sachs, the J.P. Morgans, and the other large financial houses come in, deregulate, and all, and it didn't, it didn't take much to figure out that when you start having these non-regulated derivatives in which the financial houses are able to leverage their, quote, investments, at 5 to 1, 10 to 1, 20 to 1, 50 to 1, at 100 to 1. 
And as the market, especially the high-tech market, was going up and up and up, and this was all off the records, untold amounts of not billions or hundreds of billions, but tens of trillions of dollars were, were, were being funneled into the hands of a very, very few number of people. And they used that to consolidate power and then to get everybody basically indebted to them. And, yeah. and specifically, George, uh, I mean, you really did specifically on your TV shows, radio shows, and in your books and audio cassettes. I mean, I remember listening to them. You broke down the derivative time bomb. Uh, you talked about how it was infecting all the other investments, how they would engage in too big to fail and hold everybody hostage, and, and then announce a new Ponzi scheme on top of that. And now, in Europe, they're calling it a private yes. financial union. Yes. They're saying all sovereignty left in those countries will be transferred to this private group. Uh, Soros says Eurozone crisis could be even worse than Lehman. Yes. He said that was a great crisis for him. UBS head, uh, that's the uh, biggest bank in Switzerland. Euro collapse could lead to martial law civil war if you don't give the banks this new power. Right. And, and then listening to Bloomberg Radio the other night, they had five experts on in a row all reading the same script, almost word for word, that this is reasonable, it's good, uh, you know, the, 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 the mega banks are taking over. I saw uh, six months ago with the big Ireland crisis, uh, as soon as they signed on the euro, suddenly they implode, and their head, right. uh, a central banker said, a quote, he said, it's good to have foreign banks run us. So, so they're hiding in view incredible economic conquest through fraud, and most of the money isn't even owed by the governments of the people. Fraud is an understatement. This is the most massive transfer of funds in the history of mankind, away from the working middle classes of not only the United States, but all of Western, of all the Western countries. I just got back from six weeks traveling through Western Europe, through, through the Netherlands, Germany, Switzerland, Austria, and France, and in Iceland. And you have two different situations. There is no question in my mind that the European Union financially is in as bad or worse shape than the United States. And the United States is so far gone. I mean, it's, 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 not, even, it's not even a game But it is anymore. by design from your it research. Is, it's absolutely by design. What's now, the end game then? Well, the end game, as you and I both know, is power. With this handful of what we call the power elite, it's not about money, because there is no such thing as money. They have all the credit, they have all what we call the money in the world. But money, this money is only the, the strings of the puppeteer to get full control of the world. It's just fake monopoly garbage. Chips they issue to us in their rigged casino. We'll sell it our mothers, our daughters, our fathers, our sons. Kill grandma for a stick of bubble gum, and it's all just a fake symbol of energy yes. that we accept from the money changers. So where is this going now that we've you predicted this 14 years ago with incredible precision, uh, you know, on paper publicly? What's coming in the next phase if their plan succeeds? versus the resistance and awakening that clearly is mounting. Well, their plan has already succeeded. However, the plan is faulty because what we call the truth movement, the resistance, people who believe in the rule of law, people who listen to the Alex Jones show, people who care. They've taken over through fraud, yeah. so we wake up from the illusion, it's over. Yeah, it's the games are the this chapter of the game is already over. They won. It's it's over. The European Union is going down. Germany by itself, even though it is doing well, cannot support Greece. Italy. And it's designed to pull them down in the end. Absolutely. It's always invest more so it doesn't sink, and then they say invest more so it doesn't sink. Invest more so it doesn't sink. That's the trap. How they, you know, basically uh, salami slice. Uh, the whole yes, situation. Yes. Now, there's some good, uh, good news in this. First of all, not all the countries are playing the game. And I got to spend a day in Iceland. And there are 326,000 people in Iceland. It was, it was very, very well educated. The people are great. But they deregulated the banks and they created 
I think, $28 billion worth of debt and then tried to pile it on the people. And the people revolted for a year. And the people revolted and said, hell no, kicked out all the politicians and said, this is not our debt. And then it, the, Iceland was in the news big time, and then suddenly nothing's there. Because they began to win. And then what did we discover? It was true. 90 plus percent of the debt was not theirs. Yes. It was the private banks that had bought off their ministers. Four private banks. That, and, and some of these banks were little bitty offices controlled by, a, you know, 20, 15, 20 people. And, and I was talking to a lot of people in Iceland, and when they first started doing it, they'd walk into a room, and there'd be 35 high-priced lawyers, not just from Iceland, but from Germany, from England, from New York, that were all trying to stare them down. But to, they still have little Viking blood in them. They called the bluff. They called the bluff, and they said, not no, but heck no. And so you know what? All, we can do the same thing. These derivatives are not our debt. They're being sloughed off. But that's my right point. Yes. Ireland is a success story. Uh, they're, they're doing great. Everybody's moving there. And yes. as soon as they sign the EU uh, Lisbon Treaty, as soon as they signed on, the, you know, they had to bring it forward twice. Right. Overnight, they said, you're now bankrupt. You've yes. signed on to the euro's debt. Yes. And, and then their bankers, their private uh, uh, Federal Reserve head came out and said, well, this is wonderful that we're signing on to this debt and ruled by foreign banks now. They yes. actually say it, trying to say it in plain view, like, well, you're a guy in a suit. You know, uh, we'll be your slave. Same thing with Greece. So, so if it's anything, it is the chutzpah, uh, the hubris. Uh, I, I, I mean, it's just incredible. And, and it's all by design. I mean, anybody who has any sort of objective, investigative knowledge could see that not just six months ago or a year, but two or three years ago, this train was going off the tracks, especially with Greece, and then with Portugal, and then with Ireland. But and their scam is, knowing it's an impossible to pay back black hole that's fraudulent, give us more power, give us more power, Absolutely. things get worse. Okay, we'll fix it, give us more power, give us more power, then it gets worse, give us more power, yes, give us yes, more yes. power. How long can that work? Well, it can work as long as the people are still in the matrix and as long as they're still mind controlled because the economy right right what we have right now is a total ponzi scheme this thing that we call money is just paper and ink it has no value this whole thing called sovereign debt it's it's all an imagination it's like the man it's like the wizard in the wizard of oz he controls the whole town through images and smoke and mirrors and it clearly, as we've talked before, real money has value, gold and silver, because it stores Private value. property. Private property, hard Idea. assets. But notice now, a piece of land, you pay a property tax. It's really a feudal rent. You don't really own it. Uh, gold and silver are one of the few things you yeah. can still physically hold. Then there's physical power. Uh, you know, there's the Second Amendment. All of these real things that a freehold, free yes. man or woman has are under assault by the globalist, and it's a simple corporate takeover model. Anything yes. that stands alone, anything that's independent, is an enemy of this globalist board. Uh, the course. family, national sovereignty, uh, ideas, health. Uh, this is literally a global spirit of destruction. Look, we're at the end game. I mean, you and I have been talking about this stuff for a long, long time. And the stuff that we talked about 15 years ago, it's like it's so mild. And every, not only every year, every month, we become aware of more and more and more and more and more. The game is all over as we know it. Just like in the movie Inception, the walls are coming down. And that's okay. But the most important thing is that we, as sovereign, divine human beings, not slaves to the corporate interest, but as sovereign, free, loving people, have to step up and take our power. Nobody's going to come in and save us. Because if Nobody we don't, is. because if we don't, tell folks where this road leads. Well, it's at the very best. It's total, complete slave. We're already, most of our brothers and sisters are already slaves to the, to the man. 
But we're talking about mass, not maybe not extinction, but mass wiping out of 60, 70, 80 percent of the population. And this sounds really radical, but this is their own plan. Now, they say world government is basically the slaughterhouse building. Yeah. And, and they have to finish it before they run us through it. You know, the, the souls, the beings, whatever you want to call them, the oligarchy, the plutocracy, the power elite, the Illuminati, this handful of people views us as cattle. Or, and they're in such separation consciousness. But you know what? We don't have to play their game. We're winning. Even though th things on the outside, in the newspapers, on NBC, appear to be getting worse and worse. We're winning. 20 years ago, we couldn't have had this discussion. I, talking about the Federal Reserve was like you were a crazy person. Now, wherever I go, people say, hey, man, I saw you on the show. I saw you on the Alex Jones video. I know, I've read your books. We know, let's talk about this. More and more people every day. And you know the book, The Hundredth Monkey, that talks about... At first, if one or two percent of the population believes something new, they get laughed at or put down. But if five or six percent of the population get it, and it's true, then everybody gets well, they, it. Well, they just did a big university study came out two weeks ago that if ten percent believe something and, 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 and keep pushing it, the rest will adopt it. Absolutely. And that's why the globalists are so afraid. They're a tiny minority who've decided to join pure darkness for 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 s simple temporal power absolutely instead uh, and literally what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul of course and it's only up to us that literally are tuned into the wider universe who see really how stunted the little man behind the curtain is yes. it's actually you know years ago i hated the globalist now i i i i, I, I cry in my soul yeah. to look upon them because these are punched twisted uh, vampiric creatures. They are. And, 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 and we have to see them as reflections of our darker self, but at the same time realize that each and every person, just like Gandhi said when he went to India, he, you know, he realized... Has the that seed of the universe within them. He said every person has the seed of the universe within their soul. And every person listening to this show, they've already started waking up. And many of the people who listen to this show are totally awake. And that's why Cass Sunstein at the White House admits they inject infighting and fake conspiracies and hatred to, to get us to fight with each other so people don't feel that magic. A absolutely. But the magic is growing. More and more people are waking up to the political, the economic, the cultural lies of the of the predominant media but what's even wilder is this game is bigger than just the economics or the political it's a spiritual choice that we have right now and you know what I used to wake up really scared about that I'd wake up in the middle of the night back you know 10 15 years ago think they're coming to get me and they could have but I truly believe in the Creator and I believe in protection. I know you've got protection. I know you talk about this all the time. And you wouldn't be here if you didn't have protection. And most of goodness will overcome. We are good people, the good people, and we're all good, but waking up to the goodness and the strength and the sustainability and the awareness and the joy that we have inside of us. Quit playing their games. George, incredible. Uh, it, it, in the final summation, we should feel blessed to be in this great crossroads. Yeah. I mean, we are living in a time when the entire future destiny of this species that is only a seed right now is going to sprout into the universe and 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 the technocrats even write about it they hate the idea of the general population humanity really spreading its wings they have had a glimpse of the universe and they seek through envy and jealousy to hoard it it's up to us that know the truth to try to unlock minds so that they can see the wider universe and undoubtedly it has been quite a saga uh, in this awakening and, you know, there is a quickening in the awakening, and yes. I really appreciate you joining us. Of course, one of your books is 9-11, The uh, Great Illusion, Endgame of the Illuminati, Our Choice, Fear or Love by George Humphrey. George, thank you so much. In, in, in a 60-second summation, any other points you'd like to add? 
The window is, oh, this is a magical time to be alive and be on planet Earth. An incredible time. And there's two reactions. We can re retract in fear, which is what they're doing, putting out fear, 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 bad food, chemtrails, all this stuff. And I understand that. Or we can connect with our higher spirits, our higher beings, create community, take good care of our personal bodies, and see this as a, as a big wave to ride, and, and go out there and surf the tsunami. And I guarantee you, and you already know this, I'm guaranteeing this to you, my brothers and sisters, that the economic, the political, and the cultural changes that are going to take place in the next three years are going to make the last 15 years seem relatively small. Be prepared. Listen to Alex Jones. Have some good food. Buy some gold and silver. Hang out with your friends who are aware of this stuff. Love your brothers and sisters. And just keep joy in your heart. You're absolutely right, George, because Again, it's one thing to point out the evil and then know that we have power over it. Some people see the show and think, well, this is just scary. No, we're admitting how serious it is, yeah. but knowing that truth and justice and light is a total antidote to this and has so much more power than evil. Evil only has power when we lay down to it. So we need to face the truth, make preparation for it, and realize we're in a very important time. George, great I to see you. I love you. Love you going to come out and hang out with me? I, I'd love to. Okay, you ever, will. <laughs> i got to keep battling a roller. Okay. Hold on one second. I'll say bye to you during the break. Folks, speaking of fear, I get criticized all the time. Hey, Planet X is going to kill us in 2000, kill us in 2003, Nibiru, uh, Common Elenin. There's always something new going to kill us. And, and this is how the global engineers sell fear to new agers and also people that are secular and, and who aren't spiritual at all. That, you know, they say, hey, it's the end of the world. No, it's actually a new beginning. If you look at the Mayan calendar, any of it, it means a new time begins. It doesn't mean the end of the world. I've actually gone down there and talked to the Mayan archaeologists themselves. So, so even if you believe in that, it's a lie. They tell the Christians it's the end of the world. The rapture isn't even in the Bible, okay, until after Christ comes back. It's not there. They want to teach you the game's over, that you're not a player in it, because the end is coming. And if they can stall you with comets and runaway planets and all this garbage that they've pre-programmed in cartoons and movies for children, then you won't feel like you have power in this universe, and so you won't be active and be involved. So coming up after this break, we're going to look at this whole disaster, end of the world economy. Who was that? I thought I recognized somebody there. <laughs> we're going to be right back. Stay with us. Then we got a guest coming on uh, who is concerned about uh, Ellen. And, and uh, who knows? It's just that I, I've heard of so many dozens of these, and, and, and that every time it doesn't kill us, and I'm proven right, they just got a new one that's coming to kill us, and somehow I'm bad because I'm telling you we have hope, we can win, and uh, there's a lot of forces out there that are a lot bigger than us. We'll be right back. Stay with us. It's InfoWars Nightly News. The establishment called him extreme and unelectable. They said he was the wrong man for the job. It's why a young Texan named Ron Paul was one of only four congressmen to endorse Ronald Reagan's campaign for president, believing in Reagan's message of smaller government and lower taxes. After Reagan, Senator Al Gore ran for president, pledging to raise taxes and increase spending, pushing his liberal values. And Al Gore found a cheerleader in Texas named Rick Perry. Rick Perry helped lead Al Gore's campaign to undo the Reagan revolution, fighting to elect Al Gore president of the United States. Now, America must decide who to trust, Al Gore's Texas cheerleader or the one who stood with Reagan. Ron Paul, restore America now. You have found it, the front lines in the information war. I'm Alex Jones, your host. We're here weeknights, 7 p.m. Central, at PrisonPlanet.tv and InfoWarsNews.com. This transmission is listener and viewer supported, so if you believe in this type of information, consider not just continuing your membership at PrisonPlanet.tv, but also purchasing your friends and family 
memberships as we develop and build this news program that's going to have other programs built around it in the near future for deployment into the television brainwashing box system to reach the general public uh, in their houses that are under globalist matrix control. Now coming up, we're going to launch the first in a series of reports we're going to be doing as we go towards uh, December 2012, now just, what, 13, 14 uh, months away, uh, we're going to be looking at the end is nigh, this obsession in the culture with how the end is always right around the corner, so let the world go to hell in a handbasket. This type of self-fulfilling prophecy uh, is uh, one of the uh, big psychological problems that could actually uh, get this world maneuvered into a position where we basically destroy ourselves. So we'll be covering that coming up here in just a few minutes. But first, I wanted to get to a couple of other uh, just bizarre news stories that are out there. One of them is spare body parts could be grown after scientists implant lab-produced organs in humans. And the Daily Mail newspaper reported on this. The problem is, is that most of these organs are grown from human stem cells, and they're artificially uh, also harvesting them out of human embryos. So we're basically simply dehumanizing uh, ourselves, and we are certainly more and more living in a brave new world. Uh, the uh, Infowars.com um, uh, posting of the story read, spare human parts grown in laboratories could be just years away after scientists discovered more than 20 ways of growing organs. They have already grown the bladder, urethra, and windpipe, which have been implanted into patients during clinical trials. That's certainly good news, though, if you're dying of uh, cancer in those areas of your body. And again, that report originally came from the Daily Mail Dot com. Continuing with one other interesting piece of news, I noticed this in the Austin American Statesman today, and Kurt Nemo at InfoWars.com wrote a more detailed report. Border control, the, no, not from the U.S. side, from the Mexico side, drug cartel demands $30,000 to let a Mexican football team come into the United States. A Mexican high school football team uh, that was playing uh, a uh, Texas a football team just north of Austin. So for a high school Mexican football team to come play a football game, uh, they've got to pay the drug cartel $30,000. Uh, the criminals are now untouchable in Mexico and have bought off the police. And once you reach that level, it is just another signpost uh, indicating uh, the collapse of our society. So we have a lot of real problems that are actually destroying um, human interaction and civilization. But you can't get the general public upset about it because it's the end of the world. And that's the next subject I want to get into. Growing up, you'd see it in the children's cartoons that, uh, that the world was almost destroyed or there's an apocalyptic planet of the apes or Thundar the Barbarian uh, in the future because of a runaway comet like Elenin uh, coming through uh, between the earth and moon uh, and causing incredible incredible destruction. So we put together a few video clips here uh, that go through the facts that, yes, there has been mass extinction of the dinosaurs, clearly linked to a giant uh, asteroid uh, hitting the planet. And yes, the Mayan calendar um, you know, says that in December of 2012 that there's an end of this age. Not into the world, but that a new hearth is lit. Um, you know, the sun is the fireplace, and, and that a new age begins. And of course, Christians, um, certain certain uh, interpretations of the Bible, uh, you know, say that there's a rapture before the end of the world, or Christ's return, or that there's a rapture after. And this is constantly used as an excuse to not get politically involved. And then, of course, you have heaven's gate where they all committed suicide believing that they'd put on their Nike tennis shoes and drink uh, vodka and take barbiturates and put bags over their heads and fly up to the Hellbop uh, Comet. Uh, of course, earlier this year you had the Christian group with uh, Henry Camping saying it would all end on May 21st. And then when that didn't happen, he said, okay, it's going to end in October now. It's all part of this, uh, this idea, this obsession that the establishment is more than happy to push on 
the public that you don't have to be involved in any type of political action because the world's all going to end anyway. The year 1994. From out of space comes a runaway planet hurtling between the Earth and the Moon, unleashing cosmic destruction. Man's civilization is cast in ruin. It's a way to get you to believe you're powerless and just turn control of your life over to the system. This is a self-implanted, brainwashing technique being used to basically write history before it happens so that you believe that you have no power. With more on the end of the world or mega disaster fascination, uh, is a gentleman who's actually uh, a serious individual and who's been studying it uh, from the facts. Uh, Brooks A. Agnew is a PhD in commercial uh, scientist and engineer with more than 17 years uh, in several fields uh, studying Earth changes. So I thought I would get his take on what's happening. Sir, uh, look, I understand that big meteorites hit the Earth, the dinosaurs are extinct, we see big comets hit Jupiter, uh, what Shoemaker Levy. I mean, I know that comets could hit us, things could happen. My only issue is I'm always being criticized in 2000, 2003, because I didn't believe Planet X was going to kill us or that the government could hide it from us. I didn't believe in back in July that Nibiru was going to kill us. Now Ellen is coming and people are like, stop covering it up. You're going to be in a bunker uh, in September, October. We're all dead. The, the tail's going to hit us. And it's a little bitty comet. So, but again, I'm not saying there aren't big earth changes and poles changing. And I know this stuff happens. I know earthquakes, super earthquakes, super volcanoes. I know that this is a volatile planet. But at the same time, this is in the scale of millions of years, is it not? Uh, break it down for us from your years of research. Well, it's all about probabilities. Earth is a, a really small and gravitationally insignificant planet in a very large uh, solar system. We have the Sun and we have Jupiter, which are like gravitational vacuum cleaners for us. So the odds of Earth actually getting hit by something is very, very slim, even in open space. Uh, things will revolve around each other or they'll coalesce with each other, but a, a direct hit is very, very rare. Uh, Elenin is uh, just a, a one in a long series of, I guess, uh, hyped uh, would-be collisions with Earth. Uh, you're right, Elenin was a small comet. It didn't have much of a tail to it. It did come from a different location than we're normally uh, used to seeing comets, the Oort cloud. Uh, but uh, just as it got within range of the sun, sure enough, it began heating up, it began off-gassing, and as predicted, the loosely um, uh, coalesced uh, head of the comet came apart, and it's uh, going to be no threat at all. It won't get any closer than 22 million miles to Earth. But there is a, a, a near-Earth object that's going to come close to Earth in November of this year, and that's MU55, which is an asteroid. Now, that's, that's quite a bit different story, and that's going to be closer than one lunar distance to us. So that's probably more alarming than a comet would be. So, and, and, and by the way, NASA doesn't deny that. So closer to us in the moon, that is like right across the street, basically, uh, in... in uh, the overall type of scales we're talking about uh, in space. Uh, statistically, I mean, I know they've argued that we get hit every 10,000 years by a big asteroid or every 100,000, every million. From your research, uh, how often statistically does this happen and are we statistically due for some type of big Earth strike? Well, statistics are can be easily manipulated. There are a lot of near-Earth objects uh, to varying degrees, but are they uh, in in a, a trajectory to, to cause Earth a problem? We have Trojan asteroids in our own Earth orbit that are ahead of us and behind of us, uh, but they're at what we call uh, limits that allow them to be equal between the sun's pull and the earth's pull they're called the grange limits and uh, so they don't move much relative to earth so they're not catching up to us and we're not catching up to them so there are all kinds of near earth objects that can be threatening given you know destabilizing events a close pass from another planet or a gravitational wave from the center of the galaxy would certainly be the de destabilizing events what we do see though is governmental agencies preparing for something. 
uh, the uh, emergency alert system, which is the uh, emergency broadcasting system on steroids. It allows them to take control of all media with the exception of the internet and cell phones, is going live November 9th of this year, the same day that MU-55 is at its closest to Earth. Now, if the elites knew that this asteroid was going to hit with this trajectory, I would imagine they'd deploy nuclear weapons of space, which we know they can do, and uh, knock it out or, or, or put astronauts on it to intercept it and put thrusters on it. Or could they use something like this asteroid to hit the Earth and use that as a distraction from the financial collapse uh, that they're basically engineering? You know, you know, that's my issue, is that you're right. Uh, we see giant FEMA underground bunkers being built. We see the U.S. spending more than all other countries combined on underground base programs. Uh, but you go to Switzerland, they have underground bases for their entire population that are public for a uh, statistically much smaller uh, price you know, for their population. So what's really going on here in the U.S.? The Russians for a decade have been behaving like it's the end of the world. So, so I kind of get torn in both directions. I, I'm sick of hearing that every new asteroid or comet's going to kill us or that there's some giant planet that nobody can see that's going to hit us and I'm covering it up because I won't talk about it. But then separately, governments everywhere and corporations are doing big seed vaults buried in the Arctic Circle and armored compounds. The elites are building and bunkers at their own homes. Uh, that's confirmed. Uh, what do you think they're getting ready for? Well, I think they're getting ready for an event like that. In fact, just last Wednesday in Pasadena, there was another workshop. This is the third one in a very short uh, sequence of time dealing with near-Earth objects and an, an Earth based response like you had talked about a few minutes ago shooting it out of the sky breaking it up pushing it off course these things are being considered and uh, it's a 48 million dollar year budget so they're they're very serious about about taking some steps toward heading off a statistical encounter uh, of an object with earth so we're always under threat. Uh, there, there could always be super volcanoes like Yellowstone go off and kill pretty much everybody in North America. We could be hit by a giant asteroid. It could cause a hundred year ice age. I mean, anything could happen. Uh, but the, the, the big issue you're concerned with, and I do agree with you uh, that the evidence is there, governments are snatching up food, seeds, building bunkers, arming themselves, and then saying anybody who tries to individually get firearms or food, we're bad, but they're good for getting ready for something. Why do you think they're putting out that particular line of propaganda, Doctor? Well, I, I could be misinformation. You know, we see the messages that are put out by NASA to their own employees. Get yourselves ready, have an escape plan, don't depend upon the grid, don't depend upon cell phones, you know, get your families together. We care about our family and your extended family. And these are just, you know, emergency readiness messages that go out to their own employees. Uh, add to that uh, the fact that we do see NASA's budget being cut on traditional programs like exploration of the moon, exploration of Venus, and yet we see scaling up of programs to deal with near-Earth objects and atmospheric disturbances and even solar flares. In fact, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, the Department of Defense completed a study where they determined that all 500 installations in the United States are vulnerable to a grid interrupt from a solar or a geomagnetic storm from the sun. So they're taking measures to head that off, to try to remain secure during those events. Now, you've also been a leading researcher and expert into HARP, and I know that that's real and, and is involved in all sorts of manipulation, weather manipulation, over-the-horizon uh, radar, you name it. Uh, but, uh, Doc, how does, how does HARP tie into this? Well, the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Project started out as a minor research uh, instrument based on the North Slope of Alaska. It grew into a, a multi-level high-powered weapons system and weapons communication system because it was so effective at moving the ionosphere around, which allowed them to manipulate the jet stream, which allowed them to manipulate weather. Uh, it was very good at doing a sort of cat scan of the earth so we could look for reservoirs so we could look for bunkers beneath the, beneath the soil beneath the ground we could analyze deep strata in the earth and we could even 
uh, evidently put in uh, long wave, high amplitude radiation into the ground and induce earthquakes. So it became the perfect weapon system with no fingerprints. Uh, as if it's not scary enough that we have something like that. Most of the major company or countries have harp systems as well. And when all of these are in operation, it really throws weather and earth stability into chaos. Well, that was my next point. Uh, I've seen the Eastman patents and the rest of it that uh, you know, you're talking about with HARP, uh, the U.S. version. But then meanwhile, in Dubai and other countries, uh, they don't even deny that they have it. They just come out, build it, set it up, and start making it rain in the desert. Uh, but then undoubtedly, that's having all sorts of other chain reaction effects uh, around the world. We have the Secretary of Defense, William Cohen, back in 97, saying, yes, there are tectonic earthquake weapons. There are there are weather weapons. You know, the uh, question is, are they using them? Bill Gates has moved away pretty much from even computers uh, into weather modification, into forced inoculation, uh, into really all these new new super technologies. Uh, Doc, do you agree with my point, though, that all of the fear mongers that are constantly putting out books and saying the end of the world is next week or next year, that they actually serve the system uh, in getting people to feel powerless uh, because the world's going to end next week. You know, we saw there's a preacher who back in the 90s said the world was ending. He comes back out and says it's going to end. Uh, what? He said it was going to end uh, on May 21st. Then it didn't end. And so next it was going to you know, uh, end later uh, uh, in the year. And then the media gives this attention. Uh, I mean, what do you think's working behind this? Or is it some ancestral memory in humans of mega disaster? And so is that why we get so excited about it? Oh, I think it's a combination of a couple of things. It's, of course, the economics behind generating fear and getting people to send you money so that you can save them somehow. And it's also uh, maybe a primordial record that all ancient civilizations have, that there was a global flood and that it could happen again. We, we do have a fossil record of a very uh, prolific and wide-range set of species that lived on this planet long ago that don't live here anymore. And they may not, that may not be the only civilization that's lived on this planet. Maybe there were highly advanced sentient races like the Sumerians and the Anunnaki and others before them that lived on this planet. There's evidence they existed and sort of an echo of their existence. So, of course, we have uh, global communication now which allows us to get these fears around the planet in a matter of moments. And whatever will, people will resonate with will generate a big response. Well, I have to tell you, uh, Mr. Agnew, we appreciate you joining us. Um, and uh, I hope that we're going to be here for a long time. I know I'm going to just continue going through my life uh, as if I'm still going to be here next month or next year because we've got to uh, try to uh, you know, continue the human species. We all individually die, but through humanity we live on uh, forever. Do you think humanity in your gut is going to make it to a type 1 civilization. For those that don't know what a type 1 civilization is, obviously that means uh, a species that gets off world and uh, isn't just bound to one planet. Uh, do you think humanity is going to make it? I think we definitely have a chance. We've been at this precipice before. If we learn to live as a planet, we can definitely do this. I, I don't know what it's going to take, but I, I can tell you the things we're clinging to now, fighting over land, over water, over energy, uh, is, is uh, primitive compared to where our mindset is. If we could overcome that, if we could learn to live beyond our fears and, and uh, not be so jealous of one another, not try to own everything or control everything, uh, and realize that we're on this planet together and that we can explore the universe as a race, I think we can make it. I think we do have the skill. And I think there are lots of people that believe that. And that's what it's going to take. Well, we started this uh, section of the show tonight, you know, dealing with the, the fear-mongering, uh, the, the establishment trying to put the idea in that it's the end of the world, Jesus is coming back, don't get involved, or it's 2012, the Mayan calendar. Um, but it, I think it's important to, you know, to be balanced. Certainly, we always are on the edge of destruction, but we're also on the edge of uh, even greater things. And I think this has been a very interesting uh, discussion, Doctor. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And of course, we've had on screen uh, throughout the interview uh, your news website and foundation. Are, are there any other sites people should visit? 
Well, my latest book, Remembering the Future, The Physics of the Soul and Time Travel, is uh, at the same website, rememberingthefuturebook.com, and you can pick that up. It, it basically says that we do not have to march down the path to Armageddon. We can choose a new future. There are an infinite number of them, and uh, all we really have to do is focus on that, and we can walk away from this path of annihilation. I agree with you. Doctor, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Well, my friends, that's it for another extremely powerful edition of InfoWars Nightly News. And uh, when the system tries to teach you that you don't control the future, that you don't have any input into the future, it's a lie. The, the, the social engineers want you to sit on the sidelines and not be involved in the arena of reality. None of us control all of the future, but we can certainly set about to shape the future instead of letting the globalist social engineers completely uh, write the maps of our minds. They are simply putting up walls in our minds, trying to keep us in a box and try to create the self-fulfilling prophecy that we're all doomed, so why should you try to make the world a better place? And all the studies show that then creates an attitude of eat, drink, and be merry, you know, screw your neighbor, cheat somebody, get ahead, who cares, uh, because it's all going to end anyways. That is a very, very destructive attitude, and people in Nazi Germany thought that Hitler was the Antichrist. People in Communist China thought Mao was. Uh, it is just continual cop-outs, and the New Agers, the Christians, everybody has just got to stop it. Again, thank you so much for watching tonight. Please spread the word. We've got an extremely powerful 9-11 special tomorrow where we look at the 10 smoking guns that prove 9-11 is an inside job. Big report Aaron Dykes has been working on all week. Richard Gage on tomorrow. A bunch of other key intel tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Central. And, of course, I'll see you on the radio slash TV, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., of course, weekdays. Uh, at InfoWars.com with the radio show and on AM and FM stations in your area as well as XM and Global Shortwave WWCR. I'm Alex Jones signing off from the front lines of the InfoWar. Great job, crew.